In this video, we're gonna take you to the Sioux Locks, which are the locks going between Lake Superior, connecting it through the St. Mary's River to the lower Great Lakes and Lake Huron in particular. So let's go see some ships. Just as we arrived, there was a large ship leaving the locks and we raced to the top of the viewing platform to catch a glimpse. We're up in the observation tower, which is a really nice place to view the locks from, especially because it's covered, so you can be up here in all weather. You get a really great view. Right here, the first lock is the MacArthur, followed by the Poe lock, and then the Davis lock and the Sabin lock. And the Davis and Sabin locks are actually scheduled to be replaced with one lock that is the same size as the Poe lock. And for reference, so you guys know how big these things are, the Poe lock is 1,200 feet long and 110 feet wide. And even though the Poe and the MacArthur share most of the, at least at this point since the other two are closed, the duty of the ships coming through, the Poe lock sees the majority of the traffic. The MacArthur lock is a little bit shorter and narrower at 800 feet long and 80 feet wide. Wide. I'm really excited to see the Sioux Locks today. They are a National Historical Landmark and they're really fascinating. <laughs> Just learning the history of the place has been really interesting to us and we're learning even more now as we see it. So to give you guys a quick overview, the first lock was opened in 1798 and it was actually a lock on the Canadian side. And then it was destroyed in the War of 1812 by the Americans. So for the next 40 plus years, all the boats had to be unloaded and cargo shipped around. And the reason for that was that there were a series of rapids here and the rapids dropped 21 feet. So it was impacted passable and all the cargo had to be manually moved around until that first lock and then again for 40 years until 1855 when the first lock on the U.S. side, the state lock, was constructed. The state lock was operated by the state of Michigan until the year 1881 when it was transferred to the federal government and now the Army Corps of Engineers works in tandem with the National Park Service and the State Historic Preservation Office to maintain the locks. So the way these work is when a boat, say, comes in from the low side and wants to go up, it enters the lock with the level of the water already low, they close the gates, they pump in the water until it is at the level of the higher lake, and it passes through. When a boat wants to go in the other direction, it comes in from the high side with the water level already up, and then they pump the water out until it is at the level of the lower lake, and it moves on. Behind the observation platform, they have a visitor center, which has tons of great information inside and exhibits I hear, but this month they happen to be closed Wednesdays and Thursdays, which is when we're here. But I found so much information online. Their website is wonderful. They have a YouTube channel. They have all these PDFs, all these PowerPoints basically that mimic the exhibits that are in there. So I really went down the rabbit hole, <laughs> you know, learning all this information. It was quite fascinating but I feel like it would be a good thing to look through before you come here so you have a little bit of an overview before you arrive or make sure you come on a day when you go in the visitor center because there is so much to know. And now we see a much smaller boat approaching and I think this is one of the tour boats that you can actually take a ride on and go through the locks. I think both upbound and downbound through the locks are included in your tour, so that's pretty neat. Correction, there are actually two boats coming, and by the different coloring, I think it must be one from each of the two boat tour companies that you can take. There's the famous Sioux Lock Boat Tour Company and the original Sioux Lock Boat Company, something like that. All right, two for the price of one. things are that there are webcams that you can watch though I think they're a bit delayed because on the webcams I'm just now seeing that first very large ship that we saw when we arrived quite a while ago but there's also another website that will show you the positioning of the boats and so we can tell that there is another large 1,000 footer coming around the corner here called the American Integrity so we're gonna wait for that and see it come in
So to finish off our time here, we get to see another large ship come through. And the really neat thing to think about is that the lock is 110 feet wide and the ship is 105 feet wide. So you get about two and a half feet, you know, margin for error on either side. It's not very much. Also, the other little ships that came through here, those tour boats, you could hardly see them, just the very top of their masts as they were in here when the water was low. You can see quite a bit of this ship, so I can only imagine when they raise the water level and this thing comes up even higher, what that's gonna look like. Here we go. that was a lot of fun. We got to see multiple ships come through, see everything up close and learn a ton. And we highly recommend that you guys come here as well. If you get the chance, let us know if you find that as interesting as we do. We'll see you guys next time as we continue our travels.